Hi, everybody. My name is Logan Sloan. I run Culture Chats here at Winters Mill High School. And today we are joined by Mrs. Bale, one of our amazing counselors. And this month we wanted to focus on mental health awareness. Um, so for my first question, just to kick things off right off the bat, there seems to be a lot of different ideas of what mental health is. But Ms. Bale, how exactly would you define mental health? Well, hi, Logan. First of all, thank you for having me today. Um, so mental health is such a broad, it's actually such a broad phrase. But in my opinion, mental health is basically um, a person's well-being when it comes to their emotions, regulation of those emotions, how they affect um, a person's body. Um, because we all know that um, it's not just actions that affect us, uh, you know, in our own actions, but a lot, our brain is such a powerful thing that the brain really does have an effect on every aspect of our body from internal to external. So mental health is just a, is just a very general phrase to describe how the brain and its functions affect what us as a person. Absolutely. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people have those different ideas of what it is and kind of like zone in on like mental health is like just like a mental illness and all of that, but really it is well-being and taking care of ourselves and all of that. Well, and it, it, I mean, and, and I think a lot of people forget that it, how it affects your physical body. Like, you mm -hmm. know, there, you get, you do get physical symptoms from your emotional and mental health. So it's just, it's just a, it's a whole body thing. Exactly. Yes. Um, how has stigma surrounding mental health changed over the past few years? Um, so, so there are things that have changed for the good and some for the bad, and there are things that haven't changed. So mental health, you know, going back in history has had a stigma. Um, when you talk about somebody that has mental health issues, you know, back in, you know, as early as 20 years ago, um, you know, those people were looked at as different and, and odd or weird or anything like that. Um, and in today's society, you know, that that kind of stigma has lessened. Um, so mental health has become more of a mainstream. Um, I don't want to say issue. That's not the right word, but it's become something that's more mainstream that people talk about a little bit more freely. Um, so and I think a lot of times the stigma for mental health is not only societal, but it's cultural as well. Um, one of the biggest stigmas about mental health is that people that have that struggle with mental health or even not necessarily struggle, but have, you know, things about their mental health that that keep them from being the person they want to be. Um, it's seen as a weakness. And anytime there's a weakness, sorry, anytime there is a weakness, um, you know, that's not necessarily something that people, you know, want to talk about. So, um, you know, that that's the bad stigma. However, because mental health has been such an issue that um, we have worked on and tried to put a positive spin on, um, it's definitely something that has been more positive. Absolutely. And I feel like we've seen that, like, especially with the pandemic, you know, having like all that time to ourselves, you know, being away from the people we love or like the people that bring us joy, that definitely has had an effect on everybody and kind of just like made us really focus on our own mental health and kind of working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and it's made people become for, for better or for worse. Um, I think the one thing that, you know, the pandemic and all of that has had people become more aware of their mental health. Um, I think, you know, as you go through, when you have such a huge change like that, um, and it's abrupt, it, you, you focus on how it affects your body. And I think that's probably how a lot of that stemmed, where that came from. Exactly. Like a reaction to why your body mm -hmm. is starting to change, mm -hmm. and, you know, feel this way. Yeah, that makes right. sense. What are some big misconceptions about mental health that should be addressed? Well, like I said before, um, especially again, it's it's not necessarily societal, but it's also cultural. Um, there are still a lot of people that see mental health as um, people that um, struggle with mental health um, as a weakness. 
Um, and it, especially in a young person's life, it young people, you know, as you, especially when you get into like middle school, when you're really your body and your the chemicals in your brain and your emotional regulation, things are just starting to change and they change so quickly. Um, and it, it does, it affects your, me- it has always in time affected your mental health. Right. So um, I think that, you know, I think that it's seen as a weakness for a lot of people if they show that, you know, they're sad or they're struggling to maintain, um, you know, happiness all the time and that kind of thing, which is um, a little unreasonable. But, you know, that's one misconception is that, you know, if you struggle with mental health, that you're you're weak in a way. Um, and one of the conversations I have had with a lot of students is uh, is one about like medication. Um, there are a lot of people that are, are adverse to going on medication to help them regulate their emotions, because, again, that's seen as a weakness. That's seen as something that you, you should be able to handle that on your own. Um, and one of the analogies that I talk to my students about is that, you know, mental health is just as important as physical health. So if you were diagnosed with a disease or with a, a condition that required you to take medication, wouldn't you get take, you know, wouldn't you do that so that you could live or live a better life, a better quality of life? Um, and then when I throw that back on, so if your mental health is affecting your quality of life, why aren't you, you know, um, and medication is kind of one of those it's one of those touchy subjects because I think, you know, there's the idea of being over medicated and, and all of that. But, you know, those are some of the misconceptions about mental health is that it, and, and a lot of kids, not kids, but a lot of people see it as a lifetime sentence. Like if you're diagnosed with depression, um, they see that as something that they're going to have to battle for the rest of their lives. And yes, they might. Um, but it gets easier. And medication is second to coping strategies and maturation, to be quite honest, you know, um, your brain is not not fully developed until you're about 25 years old. Um, And we forget that. And we forget that, you know, even as a 21 year old, when you're considered an adult, you're still not at your full brain capacity yet. Um, So it's hard because it's not able to be seen and touched. Something that's not tangible is really hard to understand sometimes. So I think that's why there are so many misconceptions about mental health is because it's just something, it's an unknown that stresses us out and we can't see it. Like I, it's not physical, I can't see it. Yeah, like we were talking about earlier where mental health and physical health, they kind of balance off each other or they affect each other because if your physical mm-hmm. health isn't well, that can affect your mental health, that can make you feel down, maybe depressed, anything like that. And if your physical health is down, then your mental health. Oh my goodness, I keep going back and forth between them, but they just yeah. bounce off each other. They do. And they're really one in the same because it's a whole body thing. Like we can't ignore that part of our bodies because it makes us who we are. Our brain is the most important part of us. And it's our brain that affects our mental health. And not only does it, it controls our physical health and it controls our mental health too. Um, and it's, just as important. It's it's really just as important. So um, I, I'm hoping that as we begin to evolve um, with this, you know, there's so much attention on mental health um, and positive attention. You know, we have programs like Sources of Strength now um, in the schools that really focus on, you know, being aware and, and knowing where you can pull those positive strengths from. Um, you know, I'm hoping that the stigma, like you said before, about, you know, I'm about mental health, it starts to dwindle. And we really start to see it as just as important as our positive, as our um, physical health. Yeah, I feel like at our school, we've definitely seen some change, which is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, And in our school, even though we are doing so well, how can we promote mental health awareness and reduce stigma? Um, It's a really good question, Logan, because it's, it's, it's tough. Um, you know, I, I, schools are such a, especially in high school, coming from middle school and being now in a high school environment. Um, in high school, it's so, I mean, everybody's looking to the future and everybody's kind of doing their growing and doing their own thing to, to shape their future. Whereas up until high school, you're all kind of like together and you're all doing the same thing and all of that. Um, so I think in high school, it does become a little bit harder. Like I'll I'll go back to the sources of strength program. Um, So I was very involved with that at the middle school level. 
Um, and it was even hard at the middle school level um, to get kids involved and, and keep it consistent. But um, at high school, it's even harder because kids are in sports and kids are in clubs and kids have jobs and kids are doing dual enrollment. And, you know, so it's really hard to, to keep the, the, you know, the mojo going, you know, to, for say, um, when you've got kids that have other responsibilities. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, one thing that they might kind of let go is a, a program like Swiss is a strength um, when, however, it's so important. Um, so I don't, I don't know how you fix that. I really don't. I, I, I mean, I, I, it comes from, you know, it would be a whole school initiative coming down from, you know, even higher than us, I guess, um, to really try to keep that focus. And I know that Winter's Mill was, especially during the pandemic, um, like it was easy to focus on sources of strength and it was easy to focus on that. And, and I love the fact that the school was so out there with promoting you know, making sure that you're well, making sure that you're doing all that. So yeah, I agree. Winter's Mill has been like on the precipice of doing all these great initiatives for so many years. Um, I think that, you know, that's a hard question. Um, I think in a school environment um, to promote mental health, I, honestly, I think it has to be a whole school buy-in. You know, I think it's something that we have to do initiatives where, it's promoted by from the top down from Mr. Brown, who I know is a big proponent of that to the teachers, to the counselors, to the kids, like, and, and how do you do that? Like, like I said, how do you do that when you've got kids kind of doing everything and going everywhere? And I think one thing that was really cool was our football season because mental health is definitely helped when people come together in a positive environment and, you know, kudos to our football team that really killed it this year. And it created like this sense of school spirit and it became a positive environment and it made people want to come to school. And, you know, so it's things like that. It doesn't have to be, we don't always have to talk about our feelings and talk about, you know, mental health, but it's even just activities where people can come together and, and be a part of something and feel like, you know, you're, you're a part of something that's bigger than just you. That is so important to mental health. So I think a school environment, if we focus on, you know, positive activities that kids can get involved in and, and be a part of our school culture, I think that is really what we need to continue to do to keep it as, keep mental health as a focus. Because, um, you know, kids hear enough about it, like they hear mental health all, all the time, but if they get it in a subtle way and kind of an unconscious way by like school spirit and activities and stuff like that, um, I think you know, I think that's the best way to hit it in the high school environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of touches on my next question, which is like, what are the specific challenges or barriers that may affect the way schools try to address mental health and reduce stigma? And like, you know, what ways we can overcome them? So, yeah, I, <laughs> excuse me. I, I, I think it, it kind of that question kind of goes back to, to what I just said, like, it's just, again, the, the phrase mental health has such, so many different vibes to it that I think if you kind of mask it with uh, activities in schools and the school, creating a, a positive school culture and, you know, making students feel accepted and, and appreciated and, um, you know, a part of a community I think all of those things kind of go into creating a positive environment for mental health. Um, I think if you just talk about mental health, it's going to go in one ear and out the other, because again, it's something that's so overly said. Um, and honestly, you know, when you do subtle things, they make more of an impact than it when you do obvious things. I hope that makes sense. Like, yeah. you know, again, like when you talk about, creating a positive school culture with a winning football team and, 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 um, you know, our school rallying around that. And, and you can't have that all the time, of course, but you know, it's the small little acts of kindness, you know, um, the, 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 the different, the spirit days and something that just brings us together in a, in a positive way, um, I think is what, and the, and the challenge with that is, especially, like I said, in high school, it's just, 
being able to have something that everybody can buy into. And, you know, with, like I said, we've got career kids leaving for career in tech and, you know, there's just, everybody's kind of doing their own thing. So finding that one thing that everybody can buy into, and you're not going to get everybody, but like, those are the things that need to be focused on. And I think kind of promoted um, in order to help the, the mental health of our students. And I know for a lot of other people, like going to school events, like you said, football games, sometimes we have, we would have tailgates. And I know I went to one of them. They were amazing. We had all the different clubs there. We had sources of strength, too, which was kind of like a subtle way of like sneaking in that kind of like uh, mental health awareness. But like it wasn't obvious, you know, it was kind of just there. And people, they're already in a good mood. They're going to check it out, stuff like that. Um, and just going to these events, these school events that are being hosted and having a good time. So I agree with that 100%. Well, and you give people, when you have events and stuff like that, and, and I know they're hard to coordinate, and I know it takes a lot of time and effort, which, you know, a lot of people may not have as much of this year or, you know, in general nowadays. Um, but when you create those, you give people a positive option. You give people an option of doing something that's better for them, that's more fun, that's more productive, that's... You know, if you then going home and, and, you know, if you go home to a bad environment um, that has maybe caused some of your mental health issues, you know, if you cre create something, you know, like you said, the tailgate, like that's just fun. You create those opportunities for kids. That's a subtle way of kind of helping get them out of that funk if that's where they are. So yeah. ideas. Exactly. And I feel like we have so many more events coming up that like people should be taking advantage of. Like I understand, like you've been saying, they have like other activities outside of school, other responsibilities, all of that. But taking advantage of those positive um, opportunities. So, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us in this culture chat, Miss Dale. I My know pleasure. A lot trying day, but we did it. We did it. We did do it. Yay. <laughs> so, but I know I'm, I'm honored that you asked me, Logan. Thank you so much for thinking of me. I'm glad I got an opportunity to kind of talk to you and, and, you know, maybe become a little bit more familiar as I'm one of the newbies here. So um, I'm honored that you thought of me. So thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. All righty. Until next time. Bye, everybody.